entrepreneurs should really focus on, like I said before, that balance. Um, knowing what your strengths are, but also knowing what your weaknesses are. Boundaries actually protect you. Boundaries help you to feel mm-hmm. at ease. And so boundaries mm-hmm. just help you to, to have a sense of peace about the things that, again, are important to you. I think there will always be a calm down with with uh, with fulfillment. It's like you know, it's like a, it's a, like a reservoir. It's it's a short term, it's a short term thing. Hey everyone, I'd like to uh, welcome you to another episode of Epiphany Off the Cuff, where we talk about the entrepreneurial journey and uh, places people go and what people do. I think this is going to be a fun show today. Today we have on our panel, Kyrie Harris, and of course we have our co-host, Hazel. Hey, Hazel, how are you? Hi, everyone. I'm doing good. So excited for Christmas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> are you ready for it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My my tummy is ready for it. <laughs> Your tummy is ready for food. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of food, a lot of fisting. Tomorrow. Oh my goodness! Oh my <laughs> goodness! Do you, do you cook a lot? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Probably cook some um, fajitas and pasta. <laughs> oh, okay, man, that's not cool. good. That's yeah. not good. Yeah, share it with your family. You know. <laughs> outstanding, outstanding. Kyrie, Kyrie, thank you so much for coming to the show. We're excited to have you. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Awesome, awesome. So, do you have big uh, Christmas uh, Christmas plans? Um, so yes, this year we're going to do breakfast with my husband's um, side of the family and then uh, dinner with my sister um, and her family. So we're looking forward to that. Awesome. 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 That sounds absolutely fantastic. Everyone had a, uh, a happy holiday season or has a happy holiday season, mm-hmm. depending on when you listen to the show. Um, yeah. I've known Kyrie for a number. We've known each other for what, about 10 years, is it? Something I like think that. so. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And so you know, you've you've been a uh, you've been an entrepreneur. You know, you've you've had your you've had your business for a while. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and and maybe a little a little bit about your journey? Sure, sure. Um, and so you're you're right. It's been a long time. It took me a while to actually get the business shaped, um, basically to the point of where it is now, and and just kind of in the frame that I felt it would, I wanted it to be. Um, But I am a mental health provider. Um, I have been in the mental health field for over six, seven years now. Um, I also have been an educator for, wow, an educator for 19 years. Um, So (laughs) I've put the two together and I'm a school counselor um, by day, but in the evenings I still have a private practice um, that I, where I see clients um, by telehealth. Um, And so that has been rewarding because it keeps me on my toes with not only the students that I see during the day, but also with the adults that I tend to see um, at night with my um, telehealth practice. So um, I get to, you know, kind of have fun with the kids some, as well as helping support them with their mental health needs. Um, and then, of course, working with adults and, and supporting them and uh, trying to manage being a wife and a mom and an entrepreneur. So. <laughs> <laughs> have you, so, I mean, a lot of times on, on the show, you know, we, we talk about some of the things, some of the experiences uh, entrepreneurs have had, you know, just getting to the point where, you know, their business is, is, is at a certain point where they're, you know, seeing regular revenue or, or whatever that looks like. You know, what we've, we've talked about, you know, some of the struggles, some of the successes. I mean, what, what are some things that uh, stand out to you? Um, perseverance is the biggest piece here um, because there are going to be struggles. There are definitely ups and downs. Um, there were times when I branched out on my own where I thought, you know, I seem to be spending more than I'm um, making. And so just trying to, you know, stay the course, honestly, and see how it goes um, and knowing that in time a profit will come about. Um, and that's certainly happened for me, um, not to mention the fact that with COVID and people being home, more people have been uh, inclined to focus on their mental health. So um, that's also been a, a really good um 
generator of business for me in terms of, you know, having more clients than I honestly can handle um, and having to mm-hmm. turn people away at times. Um, so, oh, wow. yeah, it's, it's, it's been a lot. Um, people have been through a lot. So, you know, that's the biggest part of this from as a mental health professional, just trying to um, be supportive, but also, again, balancing what I can with the practice as well as with my own personal needs. Fantastic. Thank you for doing what you do. I mean, that's, that's a lot. I, I, I talk to, uh, you know, professionals in your field. They talk about you know, sometimes even, you know, taking on, you know, some of the stuff that, uh, you know, some of their patients or, or counselees are, are going through. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a lot. I mean, just on top of uh, owning a business. Yes. You know, and, and that's really what really one of the things I wanted to talk about today was, uh, you know, is is mental health. You know, it's, you know, as an entrepreneur, as you were saying, you know, there's there's a lot of things that go on. You know, there are a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of disappointments or a lot of, you know, frustrations. There, there are a lot of unpredictable situations that, you know, we have to that we have to go through. You know, and we have to make, you know, decisions and that sort of thing that, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, sometimes it, it just seems like, you know, there, there's no, you know, end in sight. There's no justification or, you know, for, for what we're going through. Because, so, I mean, at, at a high level, I guess, um, you know, perhaps either, you know, what kinds of things have you seen or, or um, you know, perhaps what, what kinds of things should entrepreneurs potentially look out for, you know, if, if they're, you know, heading towards like a, like a mental health crisis? Absolutely. Um Entrepreneurs should really focus on, like I said before, that balance, um, knowing what your strengths are, but also knowing what your weaknesses are. Um, I've been working with um, a friend of mine who's had some challenges with the business side of, of running a practice, um, and unfortunately, yeah. it's, it's gotten to a point where she's honestly out of control. So we've been trying to dial back and make sure that, you know, things, that the accounting piece works out while she makes sure that her physical health um, and mental health are good. And so it, it's really trying to balance and knowing like when you need to farm out, you know, some of the work to someone who has more of an expertise with that um, versus sure. the things that you know that you are really good at and focusing on that. Um, and then having those outlets, I always talk about having a release with my clients. You got to release the stuff that you build up because we take in a lot during the course of the day. And so it's always important to have a, an opportunity to just let it out. Um, and so it can vary in terms of what that release looks like for people. Um, you know, it can be something as simple as, you know, blowing bubbles and just like <laughs> regulating your breathing. Um, and, and that honestly, it, as funny as it sounds, it really can be very helpful and beneficial. Um, but things from like blowing bubbles to taking a trip, you know, a lot of people like to travel and, and get away. Um, and so that's something that people can do. But just having some way for you to have a release is truly important. And so I would definitely encourage everyone to find what that release looks like for them. Um, mm. My husband laughs at me because a lot of times at night, if I've just been going and going and going, um, Right before we get in bed, I'll say, hey, I'm going to play a couple games of Sudoku or Solitaire before I like actually lay down and go to sleep. And he laughs because he knows that that's my way to release. Um, sometimes I just don't have a chance to, you know, like have that meditative time um, at night like I want to. Um, but just figuring out what works for you. So, so Sudoku or Solitaire works for me on my on my phone. But then also in the mornings, like I meditate. Um, I have my spiritual mm-hmm. time. So just knowing, like, again, what really works for you. Um, trying to sit still at night to do my meditation doesn't always work for me. But for some people, they need that before going to bed in order to sleep well. Um, so, again, it's figuring out what's going to be the best fit for you and everybody's going to be different. Um, but we can all borrow ideas from different people. Um, so talking to your circle of, of friends and, and family to find out, like, okay, wh- what are you doing and what are you doing? And seeing how you can, you know, either borrow an idea or tweak it mm-hmm. so that it works for you. Hey, Hazel, do you do anything like any anything like that? As for me, Yes, yes, I do. I well, it's the pandemic, so we still don't travel a lot. But sure. um, 
I do engage in some like escapism activities, like reading books and stuff like because、mm-hmm. you know it, it's it's important to, to、uh, like Harry said, to have that that work life balance. Yeah. I I do have a question though for Kyrie. So, um, how do you draw the line between between you know that work life balance? Because sometimes you know taking a break can have an impact with your momentum and being an entrepreneur. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, and so, you know, the the thing is figuring out what is going to work for you and setting some boundaries.、Um, you know, as an entrepreneur, you you want to go 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 because you feel like you got to always have that grind going or you got to hustle so、yeah. much. But honestly, you you have to find that balance in terms of when can I take that break,、um, knowing what's really important, and those boundaries are going to help you to to define what's most important for you. Thinking through honestly, you know, what are my priorities? If the priorities are your family, then you know that you got to cut off work at some point in time so that you can spend time with family.、Um, mm-hmm. Especially for those with little children, it's like, oh, well, you know, I'll wait until they get older. Well, that time flies by, so you really want to make some concentrated effort. To spend time with the family, you know, while they're here, while they're, you know, still young, because there's so many fun things happening, and even as they get older, yes, they're doing their own things, but you want to still be very、um, intentional about the time that you make for the things that are priorities for you. So, you know, it, it's it's really being intentional about what's important for you. Um, and setting some boundaries. And boundaries, a lot of times people feel like boundaries are like this, you know, brick wall or this concrete wall. Boundaries actually protect you. Boundaries help you to feel at ease. When you set a boundary, if you say that I'm going to work until six o'clock, and you shut it off at six o'clock, you can actually breathe because you you satisfy something that you have set in place. It's not that if if an emergency came up that you couldn't say,、oh, okay, well, I, I really do need to deal with this emergency. You you deal with it, but you know that I'm not going to pick up the next thing because oh yeah, I don't want to have anything lingering over for the next day. And so boundaries、mm-hmm. just help you to to have a sense of peace about the things that again are important to you. How do you overcome like that 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 sense of guilt that you have sometimes、mm-hmm. when? You know, it is you know five o'clock or six o'clock, and there's still you know a bunch of things on on that list of things to do. So you know, you really just have to decide how do you want to tackle it. And so that's where I, I would imagine that you've probably talked about this some is the prioritization of your day. You know, the things that you know that you really need to get. Um, completed in a day, you try to do those things first. You try to knock those、mm-hmm. out, and so you you make that plan. And so yes, emergencies happen, things arise that you know maybe need your attention, and so you still go ahead and focus on that. I think what happens you know, a lot of times with business owners、um, is that we get so focused on trying to get it all done, and that's the、yeah. problem that. You can't you can't focus on everything getting done in one day、um, because、yeah. that, your business isn't going to thrive. There are going to be so many things that come up, and again, that's where you also need to know how to delegate. There's some things that you don't don't require your time. It doesn't require your attention. Somebody else can handle it, and you can review it or check it or however you want to go about it. But you don't have to be the one managing every single thing.、Mm-hmm. And even for small businesses. You know where it's only a few employees. Delegate to those people that that you need to delegate to, or you you know temporarily hire someone to manage some of those things. But just recognizing, like again, what is the true priority or priorities, and then deciding like how they need to be handled, what you need to handle versus what someone else can handle,、um, and and recognizing that. You can always review things or, or check behind someone.、Um, accountability is important, so let the people know that you are delegating to, that you are going to be checking, that you're going to be following up with them to make sure that things are done in a timely manner. And if there are any、mm-hmm. sort of issues, that they're going to let you know, so it's not, you know, the nth hour, and you're like, oh my gosh, it hasn't been done, and, and then you're scrambling. 
Um, so just making sure that you delegate properly, that you um, check in with the person or people that are working on those things that you've delegated, and then, you know, keeping like that boundary in place for yourself. I love that. You know, being an entrepreneur, you know, what happens is that um, it's not only our own mental health that we need to take care of, but also our employees and you know, team members that, that works for your organization. So yeah. um, my question is this, what are the steps an entrepreneur, a business leader can take to ensure that their subordinates as well, uh, their mental health are well taken, taken care of too? Yeah, that's and excellent. cultivate that mental health culture. That's an excellent um, question. Great question. Um, the answer is is kind of multifaceted. One, you want to encourage time off. Um, you want to make sure that people are implementing boundaries in their lives, just like you should be implementing in your own as an owner. You want yeah. them to take that time away so that they come back refreshed and renewed and ready to go. But you want them to take some time away so that they don't feel burned out. You want to um, encourage them. I tend to, especially being a, a school counselor, I can send to the staff as well as to students and families little inspirations from time to time. Um, so I've kind of coined Monday as Mindful Monday. Uh, Wednesday Wellness Wednesday, Thursday Thankful Thursdays, and so forth, um, and, and just trying to send little things out. It might be a meme, it might be a video. Um, I think one Friday um, during September, which is uh, Latin American Month, I sent um, a, a video clip of Gloria Estefan doing one of her songs, and you know, like, okay, it's time to get up and dance, and just like have, to <laughs> um, you know, so just little things like that can help. You know, if you have a designated person that can be kind of the um, the wellness advisor for the company, that's great. If not, then take it upon yourself, put a reminder in your phone to just send out a little something that helps people. The funny thing is a lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the things that I send out to our staff, I need for me. It might be, it might have been a, a busy day the day before, or, you know, I might have a lot on my mind and I'll send out something that makes me laugh. And I'm like, hey, I'm sharing this with, with everybody else because hopefully they will laugh. Um, and so just little things like that. When you have um, a company that has um, like EAP, and I know that's normally with your larger companies, but some smaller companies will have it as well. EAP is called an Employee Assistance Program. If any company um, offers that, that's also an excellent way for, for your employees to um, just relax and, and figure out some some things. One, it offers free mental health um, or counseling. Usually it's like three sessions or so, but when it's free, that means that the person can try it out and just see how it feels without any, you know, real obligation. So that's something that is really helpful. Um, encouraging your staff to speak with um, mental health providers from time to time encouraging someone to maybe come in and talk to your staff, better, whether it's a motivational speaker or, um, you know, or a counselor even that can just speak to some of the things that are going on. Videos, like just little things that you can share with your staff that will help to uplift them and reset them um, because we all get burned out at some point in time. And so when we don't recognize that we need to take that time, it's nice to have somebody else who can say, hey, you know what? It's been a while since you've taken a vacation day or a PTO. Why don't you take the afternoon and go get your nails done or go to the, you know, go get a massage or go walk? You know, because sometimes in Atlanta, as we know, the weather is going to be 70 on Christmas. <laughs> um, <laughs> go for a walk and it's a nice day as opposed to it being 30 degrees. So mm -hmm. you know, just sometimes being out in nature can be, um, soothing for people. So think of little things that might help if your um, office backs up to a nice river or um, a very scenic area. Just encouraging people to take a few moments to do little things like breathe or meditate mm -hmm. or take a walk. 
all of those are really good relaxation releasing um, strategies that will help everyone reset. Wow, that's great. That's great stuff. So I guess on the, on the other side of that coin, you know, being, you know, as, as, a, uh, as a business leader, you know, with so many people working remotely, you know, regardless of the size of companies, I mean, how, what are the, what are the red flags for managers or for leaders, you know, um, you know, in identifying, you know, team members or employees that, that are going through, you know, some sort of mental health issues. I mean, again, I mean, with remote, we see each other very infrequently now. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things I do encourage um, when when your employees work remotely to check in with them by by face, by Zoom or, you know, some other um, video conferencing periodically whether it's once mm -hmm. a week, every couple of weeks. And it's just good to lay eyes, as people will say. Um, I've got friends that will say, I just need to lay eyes on you. It's mm -hmm. good to lay eyes on people and see, like, what their countenance is like. Um, you can mm -hmm. hear their tone. Their tone might change if they're really short or they sound agitated or they sound stressed. You can hear it, mm -hmm. you know, when you talk to people. So making sure the connection is there. Um, just trying to, to make sure that you are able to kind of verify for yourself how things are going, doing informal check-ins with people. Those are all excellent ways to see if there is um, a pending crisis that's on the way, finding out, you know, how people's families are doing, because it might not be them um, that's going through something, but it might be a close family member. And if they're, if a family member is really, um, going through a difficult time, that means that they're going to be experiencing some difficulties. Um, they're going to, like I said, not be able to focus as well. So when you're yeah. noticing little things, especially when there's a shift in the person's character in terms of how they typically are, if you have a person who's normally very organized and very um, timely with things, and all of a sudden they're no longer that way, that's a sign that something is going wrong. So if there's a shift that's usually an indication that you need to really check in with them and find out what's going on. It doesn't mean you're prying. It just means that you want to really find out how to support that person. And again, that's when you might need to offer, hey, take the afternoon off, take the day off and figure out what you need to do to support that person or, or yourself. Wow. Wow. That's 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 great stuff. That's great stuff. I'm taking notes over here. <laughs> no, no, problem, no problem. You know, and it's it is harder when it's um, when people are working remotely, but the, those informal check ins are really valuable. Um, just like I said, those meet if you do a meeting once a week where you can see everybody's face, you can see like what's going on. You can see how a person is feeling, you know, um, yeah. and then if you are um, checking in like a one on one. That's all, but also another excellent time to really find out, okay, so really what's going on? And, and do it in different ways. Sometimes you can do it with um, like a rating scale, a one to five, you know, with five, five being horrible and five, uh, excuse me, five being horrible and one being great um, and just see where they are on that Likert scale. But then the mm -hmm. other thing is doing like creative things. Here's a video and, you know, Tell me where do you see yourself in this video? Or which person do you identify with? You can use emojis. Um, there's a tree blob um, that it's called a feelings tree blob. That's another excellent one. It's got people all throughout the tree. And that is a good way. I like to use that, especially with my students, to check in and see, okay, where what are we feeling like today? Some there's one where a person is sitting next to another person and they, they have their arms around each other. So sometimes people feel like they have to support somebody else. There's one where the person is sitting on the tree limb and their back is to, you know, is, is to you. And so sometimes people feel like, I just want to be left alone. I don't want to deal with anything. So depending mm -hmm. on the response that you get from things like that, that will also tell you. If a person is that particular number where their um, back is, is facing you, then that tells you that something's going on. If they don't want to be bothered, you know, maybe the workload is too much for them. Maybe they are yeah. going through some personal things. Like so many things could be at bay there, but unless you do some sort of check-in, you're never going to know. So um, as an entrepreneur, I mean, a lot of times, you know, we're just, uh, you know, just completely driven. You know, it's like, you know, we're just going, 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 going. What are some signs, 
you know, we might want to look at, um, you know, perhaps internally to say, hey, you know what, there might be a problem here. There's a, you know, we need to slow down, do things differently, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. Um, so typically when, again, when there's that shift in your perspective, um, if you are typically an upbeat person or a, um, a, you know, really a go-getter and all of a sudden you feel like you just don't have any energy, you don't mm. want to keep um, coming up with new ideas, that's a sign mm. that you really need to slow down, that you need to stop and reset. Um, you know, when it's less subtle, if it's if you're having a difficult time getting out of bed, um, each day, you know, a lot of times I know for myself when I really love what I do, I can get up even if I'm tired. I can get up because it's like, hey, I know I've got some things that I'm looking forward to doing today. But when it's when I'm more stressed and I've just got more things going on um, than I want to handle, I'm like, oh, I need to stay in bed a little bit longer, or I just can't make it. And so when you're feeling when that shift happens to you you know you need to to do some self-care. That's the bottom line. Um, But also, if people are noticing that you just don't look the way that you used to look, if the the glimmer in your eye isn't there, and 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 more than one person is telling you this, pay attention to it. Because sometimes we are going so much that we don't recognize the signs ourselves. So if somebody else, you know, mentions it to you, Pay attention to what they say. So it's just a matter Mm -hmm. of of, um, being attentive to not only yourself and how you feel, but also to what others, people that you value um, and respect are saying to you as well. I love that you're you're honing in on, you know, go-getters suddenly uh, having their downtimes. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to, to talk more about that because... Um, so sometimes what happens with, with go-getters is that I typically they are you know they are achievers they do really well with with their job but then most of the time um, I mean for me it happened to me actually at one point in time wherein um, I I become high with achievement because you know achievement for me can be like like a drug you know you're high you get you get socially validated it's like you know it's like going to to a social gathering somebody somebody asks you what do you do and you say you know i'm doing this i'm doing that you get accepted right you know and it it feels very good but then there is a calm down with that i think there will always be a calm down with with uh with fulfillment it's like you know it's like uh it's uh, like a reservoir, it's it's a short term, so it's a short term thing. So, mm-hmm. what happens when when there is like um, when there is like a stagnancy, or like the, you know a lot of diminishing returns is coming in, we're looking we're looking for something new. Emptiness happen, and you know that can lead to destructive person personal habits. So, mm-hmm. what do we do with that with that emptiness if we've gone way too deep? In achievement in exchange for that fulfillment how do we how do we begin to really um, to really continue having that streak and retain our retain our peak performance so you know it, it really goes back to um, something that I mentioned at first like knowing how to have a release um, no one, <laughs> no one living can possibly go, 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 go all the time without having a moment to rest. Um, and so we've got to learn how to take time to stop and, and reset our minds. If you're constantly going, there's no way you can have a, a refueling of ideas and thoughts and and that productivity. So at some point in time, everyone must stop, take a break, breathe, and see like what new ideas might actually come to, 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 um, to the forefront in mm-hmm. order to keep moving. If you don't take that break, I promise you it will not happen. So whether you want to call it a vacation, 
whether you want to call it a mental health day, whatever it you want to call it, you need to have some time that you actually pause. And I don't just mean when you go home at night or when you stop at whatever time it might be during the day. I mean some intentional time away from the office and the people that you have to deal with on a daily basis. Taking some time just to reset. And if you think about it, in education, a lot of times they talk about, you know, professors will take a sabbatical because they want to hone their skills. They want to do some more research. All of those things, a sabbatical is necessary in order to improve. That's the same thing for mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. We have to take a step back in order to look and see, like, what are we going to do and plan for the future? If you think about as we approach the new year, people have to stop long enough to think about what do I want to accomplish in the next year. I have to look back and see what have I done already so that I know what I want to move forward to. It also yeah. means taking a, a look at things that you've done not so well in order to say, yeah, I don't want to do that again. I don't want to repeat that. So let me figure out how I move forward. And so it, it requires some downtime in order to really move forward. That's interesting. That's um, something I know for a lot of folks is, is kind of scary, you know, because it's like, you know, you feel like, and it's it's not necessarily true, but you feel like, you know, when you take that break, you know, it's just like, oh, everything's going to grind to, this, to, to a halt. Nothing's going to happen. I'm not going to make the money and lose clients, blah, 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 blah. And it's, it's, it's scary. You know, I, 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 <laughs> I took a vacation, a vacation last uh, January, you know, to, to Miami and I forgot to stop, you know, and I kept working and, you know, kept making things. And it, and to be honest with you, I, I don't know that it made anything better. You know, I don't, I don't know that, you know, the company was better off, you know, because I, um, you know, because I, I continued working. I probably should have just taken that time off and come back refreshed and, and kept pushing forward. So I, yeah. I get that. I get that. Uh, but certainly, suggest, I certainly do, you know, recommend, you know, agree with you that, uh, you know, that time off, that time away, you know, and having that um, that outlet, you know, is, is, is really super important. Oh, let me just say this, too. Um, sure, studies sure. have definitely been done um, about people who take vacation and what their mental and physical health are like versus those who do not. And so the, the research is, is very clear. When you are um, refreshing or, you know, having that outlet, then mm -hmm. you definitely are able and physically as well as mentally able to come back stronger than you were before. And so, mm -hmm. again, I recognize the fear for business owners. I, I, I felt the same way. Um, but you, you will – honestly and truly burn out. I don't care how much you love what you do. I don't care how passionate you are. You cannot mm -hmm. keep going 24 seven and expect for those th to have that same feeling. It will dwindle at some point in time. And so when you yeah. plan, when you're intentional about planning vacation or just time away, it really does help you to come back refreshed. It helps you to stay on top of your, on top of your game versus being at the bottom and trying to climb your way back. So if you if you even try it just for a day to see, okay, well, and, and be intentional about doing something that you truly love, not just, you know, sitting around, although sometimes sitting around is, is not a bad thing because your body needs it, um, but just mm -hmm. try it and see how it, how it feels when you go back. Once you try it, I, I feel... 100% positive that you will actually want to take vacation or time away, you know, periodically. Again, I'm not saying you got to take months off, but a few mm. days here and there <clears throat> sprinkled throughout the year, I do know that it will make a tremendous difference for you both mentally and physically. How about daunting events? You know, entrepreneurs, they experience a lot of unexpected events that can completely change the trajectory of their business. So how do they um, maintain their emotional stability, you know, maintain a level of yeah. perspective and not get 
to emotionally swayed with that, you know, daunting event. Let's say, for example, um, you know, a big client leaving all of a sudden. So how do we keep that emotional perspective from getting us off the momentum and uh, essentially, you know, keeping ourselves grounded and making sure that the decisions that we make are, you know, fitting for the situation in an objective manner. Um, so one thing that I, I can't remember who said it, but someone has shared with me at some point in time about not taking yourself to um, thinking of yourself very lightly. Like, don't think that you have every answer to every problem. You're not going to. But as a leader, you will always be able to figure it out. So you can't guarantee, you know, what's going to happen that you know that there are going to be issues that are going to arise in a business. You can't project what all of those issues are going to be. And so because of that, you want to just be able to pause for a few moments to figure out what's going to be the best decision-making model for yourself. You know, sometimes it's, okay, well, I've just got to pivot and go to this in this direction or, you know, in, in the example that you provided, um, Hazel, about maybe losing a really big client. Well, you got to pause long enough, long enough to understand, okay, what causes client to leave and mm -hmm. you've got to troubleshoot it. You know, what are some of the, the parameters around this client leaving? How do we try to position ourselves so that an another client or a big client like this doesn't leave? You know, mm -hmm. what things do I need to do differently? You've got to be able to pause long enough to truly understand the situation before moving mm -hmm. forward. Now, I can guarantee you <laughs> that if you just act out of haste, it is not going to go well. And so that's why pausing is really, really, really important, um, especially for a leader. Being reactionary has never helped anyone. One more, one more question. Um, so, you know, with, with, with I guess tag, tagging along with what uh, with Hazel shared, um, the physical, there's, there's physical manifestations, obviously, of, of stress and that sort of thing. Um, what are, what do those tend to look like? You know, um, I, I and I think you know, and I'm just speaking from you know from my experiences, you know, over the years as an entrepreneur, and I've seen, you know, I've, I've I mean, frankly, I've, I've I've gone through a lot, you know, and so you know, sometimes, you know, I think in retrospect, oh, you know, this may have happened because of stress, but I mean, what what kinds of things have you seen, and and you know, and and I'm assuming that a lot of this, you know, would you know, you'd go back to, you know, self-care and meditation, that sort of thing. So I won't ask you that again, but um, what, what, what have you seen? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a really good question. Um, a lot of times people, it, I'll be honest, the physical manifestation of stress can vary. Um, it depends on the person, but I have absolutely seen uh, headaches uh, for a lot of people. Um, I've seen stomach aches or just GI problems in general. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes even, well, high blood pressure, of course, is, is another big factor um, that people tend to, to see and feel um, right away. And, and with the high blood pressure, that's the thing where you can feel it in so many different places. You might feel a tightness in your chest, but you also might feel, you know, palpitations in your, um, from your heart. Um, you could feel experience back pain. Sometimes the pain just travels throughout your body. So it is really quite interesting, um, the physical manifestations of stress and why you have to really understand yourself well enough to know how do I start to address these issues. Um, just, a, a, I guess, a quick little insight about me. I realized I was... Um, having vertigo. And while, yes, vertigo is a very real term, medical issue, um, I noticed it whenever I was the most stressed. Mm. And the more I started to pay attention to not letting, not allowing myself to really go into my own mind about that stressful situation or circumstance, 
that's when it started to subside. Now, yes, medicine had to be a factor for the vertigo, but even with headaches, I've gotten headaches, and because I recognize that it's a stress headache, I've been able to just focus on my breathing. I've been able to do like just different strategies that would help me. So there is a, um, a strategy called tapping. And so with tapping, you can tap in different areas, but it's usually um, where, and, and tapping is something that you definitely want to uh, speak to a mental health professional who can give you more insight about it. But I've just learned that tapping certain areas um, helps me to, to calm down. And so, mm -hmm. like, for instance, I would hold um, in between my thumb and my um, index finger if I squeeze there or like a pressure point. Um, that's mm -hmm. usually one of the areas that will help me to, to de-stress. Um, you know, just like holding my finger toward, um, usually my tension is like right here above my, um, my eye. And so if I just kind of hold in this spot, that would release the pressure for me along with the deep breathing. So mm -hmm. that's where you really have to understand your body um, and figure out, okay, where am I feeling this and why am I feeling it? And once you recognize that it is stress because you're thinking about something that might not be happening for two days or possibly mm -hmm. even two weeks, but understanding, you know, how your body responds to stress, that will help you to know how to deal with it. And so obviously consulting with a mental health professional can be very important. Um, there is a lot of science behind neurobiology at this point and, and how to help you because your brain is impacting you know, what you think about, um, and then also how your body reacts to it. So just learning some of the information um, that's out there now and how to best support you I, is what I would definitely recommend. Fantastic, fantastic. Hazel, did you, did you have one more question for Kyrie? No, I'm actually all good. She answered all my questions very well. <laughs> Right? This is amazing. Thank you so much. Hey, yeah. question for you, Kari. I mean, if people have other questions for you, I mean, um, are, are they free to reach out to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. They can either email me. Um, they can go to my website, um, which is designed the number two and then excel.com. Um, okay. They can also, like I said, email me um, at k.harris at designed the number two excel.com um, and that will they can you know shoot me an email um, I will honestly I'm not taking new clients right now just because I do have um, so much and I had to set some boundaries um, just like we For talked sure. about um, <laughs> but I you know can definitely point people in in a direction of you know some good mental health therapists um, but you know like I said I can definitely answer some questions Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for that. And, and what we'll do is we'll put uh, your information in the show notes so people can, you know, just go there. They can click on that and, and start that email or, or whatever they need to do. Thank you so much for being on the show. I mean, this was this was really insightful. You know, I've, I've, I'm sure I'm walking away with some tools. I'm sure, you know, uh, Hazel um, has as well. And I'm, I'm sure our guests are really going to enjoy the show. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it, and I'm happy to, you know, share additional tips if necessary. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, yeah. folks, thank this you so much for watching. This has been a powerful watching. episode. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. <laughs> um, folks, thank you so much for listening and watching uh, another episode of Epiphany Off the Cuff. We look forward to seeing you next time. If you want to follow us, you can see us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever, and you can listen to us wherever your uh, favorite uh, listening uh, location is. We'll see you next time. Thank you again. Yeah.